so tonight I'm going to read the sutta and then the story. So tonight's story, first of all, the data. Gata uh, says Yata Agarang Yata Agarang Duchanna Wuti Samativitati Evang Abhavitam Chitang Rago Samativitati. The counterpart for this Gata is uh, Yata Agaram Shuchanna Wuti Na Samativitati. Evam subhavitam chittam ragona samadhi vichati, which means just as rain penetrates a badly roofed house, just a badly roofed house, so also passion, raga, penetrates a mind not cultivated in a tranquility and inside development. Samatha and Vipassana meditation. So basically, like uh, rain penetrates through the roof if that's a badly roofed. Similar way, a mind which is not cultivated in uh, Samatha and Vipassana, then it's easy to fall into the passion. A counterpart for this uh, agata is uh, just as a rain cannot penetrate a well-roofed house, so also passion, raga, cannot penetrate a mind well cultivated in tranquility and insight development. Okay. So, and the a counterpart is basically um, the roof which is Well, well roofed, then it won't penetrate the water, uh, so our mind will not be, similar way, our mind will not be uh, disturbed by the passion. And the story is quite a, 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 a nice story, actually. Yeah? The story is about Buddha's brother. Right? The story goes like this. Once the Buddha was residing at the Veluvana monastery in a Rajagaha when his father, King Suddhodana, repeatedly sent messengers to the Buddha requesting him to visit the city of Kapilavastu. So this is after Buddha left the uh, Kapilavastu uh, the palace, went on searching for the truth of so-called seekers, truth seekers. And attained the Buddhahood for six, after six years of uh, a, a dedication and determination and strong practices. Eventually, he attained the Buddhahood and known as the Buddha. And after he became the Buddha, he didn't travel back to the Kapilavastu straight away. So his father, who was the uh, king, Suddhodana, sent messengers to invite the Buddha to come back to Kapilavastu so many times. And accordingly, the Buddha made the journey in the company of 20,000 Arhats. And on arrival at Kapilavastu, he related the Vaishantara Jataka to the assembly of his relatives. And it happened that uh, as the Buddha arrived in the Kapilavastu, the seniors were thinking that, oh, we are seniors and you should be paying respect to all the seniors. And as the Buddha, it would, the, the commentary says that if the Buddha paid respect to uh, the seniors, the seniors will go to awful state uh, because the Buddha was you know, purified well 
exalted one. So he shouldn't be paying respect to anyone. And that's again from there, uh, when people are paying respect to the monks, monks are not paying back. That's uh, another story as well. And as a result, uh, in order to teach them, the, when, a, when the Buddha told the, another story of, about, uh, of his previous life, that's a Western Parajantaka. It's again a beautiful story. It has got the 13 chapters and a long, very long story. And it's a very beautiful one. That was the first day, simply to get rid of the pride and the, uh, this um, conceit view of the uh, uh, senior members of the Kapilavastu. On the second day, he entered the city where, by reciting the verses beginning with Uchitte Napachanya, one should arise and should not be unmindful, he, co uh, on, uh, he caused his father to be established in the Sotapana Fushan. And what happened on the second day, on the first day arriving in his palace, so in his city, nobody invited him for the tomorrow's lunch. Uh, Sudodana, the king, he thought that he is my son, so he should be coming to the palace for the lunch. But he is no more a son. He is the Buddha, who is, who is a, a, a monk. So, and the next day, because nobody invited him for the lunch, so the Buddha went for begging food on the streets of his own and that he was the prince begging food and having heard that the messenger sent a message to the king that oh king your son is begging a food on the streets whereas the king had prepared so much food in his palace hoping that the buddha will come and eat in the palace and he felt very shamed so he rushed to the buddha and said why did you do that? You are the son of the king. Why are you begging food on the streets? Why don't you come? Why are you making me shame? And bringing me shame? And the Buddha say, say to the king, Their Majesty, I am no more your son. I am the Buddha. I rely on people's offering. So, in that moment, the, the Buddha gave uh, the, he gave his father uh, this teaching that one should arise and should not be unmindful. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, with that, hearing that teachings, he became a Sotapanna, the stream enterer. And then a Buddha, uh, he was invited to the palace and the Buddha went to the palace. And so on arrival at the palace, the Buddha recited another verse beginning with the Dhammang Chari Sucharita. One should practice the Dhamma and establish the king in a Sakadagam. After the meal, he arrived at the Chanda Kinnari Jataka, narrated the Chanda Kinnari Jataka with reference to the virtues of Rahula's mother. And after the meal, <coughs> again, Buddha told the story about the uh, sorry, Buddha uh, meant, uh, Buddha told the the, the Dhamma on the one should practice the Dhamma. I thought Dhamma Dhamma Chare Sucharita. Here basically one who is practicing in accordance with the Dhamma, he will be protected by the Dhamma. And meanwhile his ex wife, yeah, Buddha's ex wife who was the Azodara Bimba was there too and uh, she didn't come to pay respect uh, and she stayed in uh, her own chamber so the Buddha this, uh, knowing that uh, his ex-wife will not come to pay respect so he went to his chamber or to his to his uh, old chamber or her chamber along with the venerable Anand uh, venerable, uh, one of the venerable monks. And then uh, when uh, 
the king was saying to the Buddha that, oh, uh, the Buddha, since you left Yasodhara, the, the uh, prince Yasodhara, she also followed uh, eating a one meal a day and sleeping on the floor like you did. <coughs> yeah? So, as you eat raw foods, and, uh, and she also gave up uh, eating luxurious food and wearing a luxurious wear uh, all the clothes. She followed you throughout. She is very devoted to you and like that. And at that time, then the Buddha told the uh, the king uh, and along with the other members. The Chanda Kindri Jataka, which is again the stories of their, their previous life, saying that how the Yasodhara, his wife, was so devoted and um, um, helped through to gain the success of their life in that um, particular time. And uh, this is the third time, the yeah, third day. Um, and after that, then on, the, on the third day, there was the marriage ceremony of a Prince Nanda, a cousin of the Buddha. Yeah? So, a cousin of the Buddha, Nanda, he was going to marry. So, he was invited, the Buddha, Buddha in, along with other monks, were invited to the house. The Buddha went there for arms and uh, handed over the arms bowl to the Nanda. So, Buddha, after finishing, uh, meal, Buddha simply hand over, Ananda, hold my, hold my um, bowl. And then uh, Nanda hold that bowl and Buddha departed. And Nanda thought that, okay, you know, Buddha probably will take the bowl back after leaving the gate of the palace. But Buddha didn't took it back. So Buddha continued walking and, and uh, thinking that, oh, Buddha probably will take it when uh, he arrives uh, at the temple, but Buddha didn't. So the prince holding the bowl had to follow the Buddha. Yeah? And the bride princess, was, which again was known as very one of the very beautiful lady in that city, called the Zanapada Kalayani, seeing the prince following the Buddha, rushed forth and he cried out, cried to the prince to come back soon. Please come back, I'm waiting for you, like that. And um, at the monastery, the prince was, you know, as soon as the, uh, the Buddha didn't, you know, Buddha didn't uh, take the bowl back and they walked to the uh, temple. And as soon as they arrived in the temple, the Buddha asked Nanda, Prince Nanda, don't you want to become a monk? <laughs> don't you want to become a monk? Yeah? And then, uh, out of shame or respect, uh, he can't refuse. So the Nanda said, okay. And now that, that's how he admitted into the order of the bhikkhu. But later, what happens is that, <coughs> um, the story is that uh, Nanda, because he still was uh, thinking of his wife-to-be, who was so beautiful of the city and she couldn't meditate you know? he couldn't meditate and he couldn't concentrate and he was always thinking of living a monkhood and go back and marry and stay with his wife to be and then one day knowing this that um, with the supernormal power Buddha sowed the Nanda the beautiful female devas of the our things are well. So Buddha simply took him to the celestial uh, world and uh, told him, come by the <coughs> between these uh, celestial <coughs> celestial beings and the prince uh, Janaka, Janapada Kalayani, who is more prettier? And Nanda said, oh, the, these women on, uh, in the celestial heavens, they are more prettier than Janapada Kalyani. Janapada Kalyani is like a, a monkey compared to these <laughs> celestial women. <laughs> and then the Buddha promised to get him 
yeah, get them for the Nanda. Uh, so Buddha promised that uh, Nanda, if you meditate, you will have these women uh, as your uh, attendants. And Buddha and Nanda became so passionate. Yeah, and then, okay, and Buddha took him back to the earth. And, then he, and Nanda meditated, start meditating. And his companions come, began to you know, uh, tell him, like, oh, he's meditating because he wants to marry with the <laughs> celestial woman. <laughs> So, uh, so it's like a hurling, uh, yeah? <laughs> and this is only for the a shake of a beautiful woman in the heavens. Nanda is back is meditating, uh, and Nanda felt very much uh, tormented and ashamed of that. Everybody was just a teasing, you know, teasing him. So uh, he went on a seclusion, and he tried very hard in the practice of the Dhamma, you know, and eventually attained the Arahat. Attend he was attend arahant, and as he became an arahant, you know, uh, totally released from the all the defilements, and uh, Buddha also knew that he is released, and and so as Buddha promised to the Nanda that I will give you uh, uh, all these women in the celestial being, so Buddha went on, and uh, um, so <laughs> uh, and then the Buddha. Uh, knew that all so um, at that time when Buddha was you know Nanda was like please do not tell this story you know in, in the middle of the uh, mass that uh, I'm going to have uh, I am uh, I, I meditated simply for the shape of uh, these women you know? so when uh, he was uh, when he answered that he held he had no more attachment to the life of a Householder, they thought that Nanda was not speaking the truth, so they informed the Buddha about the matter and at that same time expressed their doubt. So then, in that case, the Buddha mentioned uh, this to this uh, to to Gathas, saying that, oh, just as the, uh, the roof that is not well uh, roofed it penetrates the rain, so does the person a person who is uh, Mind is not uh, developed uh, in the samatha and uh, vipassana meditation, uh, then it will be easy to fall into the passions. Uh, whereas, contrary, a roof which is well roofed will not penetrate the rain, so does uh, the mind which is trained. Okay, so this is the story for today. Yeah? Thank you very much. And now on, I will. Uh, stop streaming and we'll come to the discussion and question and answer sessions and whoever would like to join with us you can join the uh, uh, zoom account which is available on the comment site so thank you everyone and see you shortly okay